Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. For those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Sonia and this channel is all about my Orthodox Jewish life and I share here some tips and tricks to making life go a little bit more easier, juggling being a full-time working mama, being Orthodox Jewish, making Shabbat meal preps and holiday meal preps. So come and join me, click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. This week's video is going to be on Passover prep during inflation. Let's face it, prices are insanely high and I'm going to be sharing some tips with you here on how I'm going to be minimizing waste and minimizing um, the amount of money that I'm going to be spending for uh, this holiday. Being that it's Passover, we tend to always overthink and overbuy. So I just wanted to condense everything here in this video. I'm also going to be including my meal plan, my shopping list, my cleaning schedule, and a lot of other things. So I hope you guys all enjoy. Now let's dive into the video. Before we dive into the actual video, I wanted to just recap quickly what Passover is all about. Passover is basically a holiday where the Jewish people celebrate the fact that they were emancipated from slavery when they were in Egypt thousands of years ago. And in that process of celebrating the holiday, we remove all types of wheat products, all the five grains like wheat, rice, spelt, oats, and I always forget one. Um, and barley so we remove all of those things from our home uh, we have different dishes that we use different pots and pans we have everything basically is new um, like the dairy that we consume or any other types of meals that we're gonna have they all have to be cooked in a way where it doesn't come in contact with any of those five grains so in the process of that we have to go through cleaning our entire house a lot of people do a full-on spring cleaning that is completely unnecessary you just have to have everything vacuumed really really well to remove all the grains um, after the house is clean then we are able to prepare for the actual holiday so i'm going to go through with you what my cleaning schedule is like um, we also have something called a Seder where we have a beautiful meal and we eat matzah and we drink four cups of wine and to tell over the story so the little children can hear and learn of our history and it's basically a very beautiful holiday. It's actually one of the major holidays in the Jewish religion. So let's get started and I'll tell you all about how I get ready for Passover. The very first thing that I do when I know that Passover is approaching about three to four weeks before it actually happens, this week I am very, very late because it's like two weeks away, I start organizing and prepping myself, uh, printing out a calendar. So I just literally print out a calendar. So this is for the month of April because it's already April 1st tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I know, anxiety, but we're gonna be okay. We're gonna do this together. So I print out a calendar and because I'm a full-time working mama, I know that I cannot possibly devote hours and hours a day to clean my entire house. So I micro um, organize myself a little bit each day what I can possibly accomplish. So you'll see in the schedule, in my calendar that on Sunday the 3rd I'm planning to do my kids bedrooms and definitely my big kids are going to be helping me with that I'll change out all of the sheets vacuum everything uh, wipe everything down uh, go through their clothes uh, if need be and that will be a great help that's going to be done by my kids mostly and I'll just monitor and the next day on Monday I'm going to do my master bedroom so this is all going to be done after work because I, I um, am working <laughs> and I won't be able to do it all. On Tuesday, I gave myself a break. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to be uh, cleaning up my pantry. Um, also, maybe leaving space for me to go shopping and where I'll be able to dump all of my items that I'm going to be going shopping for. I'm also going to be very realistic knowing that on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm going to be in Shabbat prep mode and there's going to be no time for me to cook or plan anything for Passover. So I leave those slots blank. And then the following Sunday, I'm planning to do a huge shopping haul for Passover. And in the evening, I'll do a little bit of my kitchen cabinets. Um, and then on Monday, as you see, I'm going to be cleaning out my fridge on Tuesday, I'm going to be cleaning out my stove and on Wednesday, I'm planning to turn over my entire kitchen. So that means 
I'm going to just completely be um, Pesach prep mode, meaning I'm going to be cooking for Passover or with Passover items so that on Thursday when I'm actually planning to cook for the actual seders, I'm already all set and everything is clean. So as you can see, I just divided all of my tasks throughout the two weeks a little bit at a time so that I'm not completely overwhelmed. So that is just a tip for you guys. If you are also working or if you're just very, very busy and staying at home, you could just not overwhelm yourself two to three days before the actual holiday and do um, little bits of stuff all throughout the next two weeks. The very next thing that I do is I start to menu plan and make my shopping list. So I do the exact same thing i print out this um, calendar from the internet it's free i'll have a link to them in the description box for you and i look at the calendar and i decide what i'm going to be making each and every single day of passover and i try to narrow things down so that i know what i'm going to be shopping for so as you see in this calendar now on friday which is the first night of passover and it's also shabbat i'm going to be making mostly shabbat meals so i'll have a roast in the oven stuffed onions matzo ball soup and baksh and on saturday i'll have osvo and on uh, saturday night which is the second night of passover i'll have some roast chicken and leftovers and I do the exact same thing for all of the other days as you see here on my menu plan. Looking at my menu plan then, I create my shopping list and I found this a really, really cool website where you could actually plug in your shopping into, uh, into the list. So I'll have a link to this as well. And it basically goes through produce, bakery, meat, baking, dairy, pantry. And it's just, I feel like on Passover, it's so nice to see it on a piece of paper so that when you're running around in the kitchen and you just jot down whatever you're missing, I've always actually done it on my phone. I find it easier because I always forget my shopping list at home. So you could actually even email yourself this list once you create it. Um, it, it could uh, edit it and I'll, ha I'll show you a clip of how I'm actually doing it right here. So as you see, it's very nicely divided into all these subcategories and you could actually, after printing out, if you forget something, you can just jot it down on this piece of paper and it's just a nice guide. I really, really liked it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it's useful for you as well. Being that it's crazy expensive now with this inflation, I think the number one rule to think about when you're planning a holiday uh, or planning some sort of anything in your life is to always set a budget first and see what you're able to work with. And once you have your budget set, you can decide what kind of menu items you can place depending on how much money you're working with. And once you have that down, you're able to be flexible and see where you can take some stuff away and where you could add some stuff in. Now that your menu plan is set, your shopping list is done, it's time to go shopping. So the trick here is to make sure you stick to your shopping list and don't add anything into it this way you won't be spending money on anything extra that you don't need because let's face it every single time we go to the store and we find something that we were like oh this is a good idea but if you're really really trying to set a strict budget then try to avoid all of those other items that you don't necessarily need for this holiday because it's only a week it's only eight days and we really don't need as much as we think we always or i mean at least i do if i go to the store i'm like oh i might need this and i might need that and i end up having so much leftovers after passover and nobody really wants passover food after passover so it's a very good idea to basically 
go look at your menu guide make your shopping list and only stick to those ingredients when you go shopping and you'll save yourself tons of money that way another helpful tip is to always buy in bulk when you can so instead of me buying one or two potatoes i'm going to be buying an entire bag because that's going to be for the most part a lot cheaper same thing with onions instead of buying loose onions buy it in a bag because it's always cheaper a lot of the times with fruits and vegetables it is the exact same thing so concentrate on the bulk items instead of the loose ones another helpful tip is to buy your meat in bulk and buy it early don't wait till the last minute because prices do go up always last minute instead of me buying two or three steaks i usually go to the butcher and ask for an entire half side of lamb or a, a nice big chunk of meat uh, of beef or veal because it just does come out a lot more cheaper that way Another helpful tip is instead of buying chicken parts, so like wings or drumsticks or thighs or breasts, I tend to buy six or seven chickens, bring them all home and cut them up. And I have the spine of the chicken left over where I can make my soup broths with. I have the chicken legs left over and it's much more cheaper that way. So hopefully that tip will help you as well. Another thing that I find very helpful in conserving on the amount of money that you'll be spending this holiday or any other holiday or Shabbat meal is to make meal items that are bulked up with vegetables and maybe rice or quinoa if you're Ashkenaz and you don't have any rice that you're allowed to use. Um, so it's making stuffed onions or stuffed vegetables, stuffed grape leaves, because the majority of that is rice or vegetables or uh, greens, and there's only a little bit of meat that goes inside of it. This way you stretch that meat, which is the most expensive part. Of it. And another very obvious tip is to shop around. Don't only go to one store. If you have the time, go online and see who has the best prices, and this way you'll conserve a lot of money as well. My last tip is to make sure that you know what you are actually allowed to buy that doesn't have to have a kosher for Passover sticker on it or a hechsher such as coffee, tea, um, so what else is there? Nuts, avocado oil, sugar. There's so many um, things that you don't necessarily have to have a hechsher for and you are allowed to just buy them uh, with certain guidelines. And there are so many guides um, on the internet. The OU has a guide. You can just click on it on the internet and you'll have a whole printable list of what you are allowed to and not allowed to buy. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and tricks on how I'm going to be prepping for Passover during inflation. There's a lot more Passover content going to be coming up. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here. Click on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Passover from my family to yours.